All right, let's get into it. We got the Maraid on versus... I'm actually not sure what Jake is playing. I think Jake is playing Lost Box. Um, which, this matchup, I definitely generally favor Lost Box. I feel like they have a little bit more control over the matchup. Actually, an interesting card. Wait, maybe I'm trolling. Yeah, never mind. I thought I saw the Roxanne in uh, Christian's... Christian's deck, not Jake's. So, yeah, we got Maraid on versus the Lost Box here. Generally, like I said, favor the Lost Box. A big card for this matchup will be potentially the... Uh, Echoing Horn from Jake. I don't know if Jake plays the Echoing Horn, but that allows you to like KO the Mareep and then get the Mareep back on the bench and KO it again because probably Christian is not playing. Christian is probably not playing the... Uh, I would bet Christian is not playing Super Rod to so, like put the put the Mareep back in the deck. So uh, we see, do, do see an early four Seal Stone use here from Christian to grab the Maraid on. I actually kind of would like to see maybe actually i don't even know would you want to do that like christian could grab nest ball here instead and then nest ball for the maridon if christian plays a nest ball instead is going for the ultra ball i assume for the same reason to like burn another card out of the deck the reason you don't really want to use the ultra ball though is because ultra ball can be another out to the flaffy at some point so i kind of would like to see the nest ball i think grabbed here from christian instead if christian plays a nest ball not everyone plays the nest ball usually you see like one nest ball in most builds though um but you i think you'd want to keep around the Ultra Balls, because that can become your Flaffy. And you probably do want to set up... So I was thinking maybe Christian doesn't even want to set up anything here and could just pass, but then if, like, Jake gets, like, a turn one... I don't know, turn one Dragonite, like, usually my rule against Lost Box is if they open... If I'm going first against Lost Box and they open a Comfy, they can probably turn one Mirage Gate if they are a turbo build. And if they open anything that's not Comfy, they're probably not going to turn one Mirage Gate. And I'm going to play like they probably can't pull off the turn one Mirage Gate. Because opening Comfy versus not opening Comfy is, like, a huge deal in being able to pull off that turn one attack. It's, like, an extra switch card you need, which is, like... Usually at the end of a of a turn where you're pulling off a turn one Mirage Gate, you're like pretty tapped on resources usually and like switch cards. So with the Sable I start, I wouldn't have been too scared of like a turn one Mirage Gate to be honest. But and oh, I really don't like this. All right, so also this is like this is actually why Flying Pikachu is so good in this deck. Couple reasons. One is like you can put four Seal Stone on. The biggest reason that I found with Flying Pikachu though is actually up against Lost Zone decks, and I actually think Christian should just not put the Zero Aura in play at all. This allows Jake to go KO the Mareep and KO the Zero Aura as two prize cards, which is like super efficient for Jake and gives Jake a lot of ways to attack throughout the game, which otherwise Jake would have been limited from. Um, which is like a reason you just don't want to put the Zero Aura in play in this matchup to begin with, if you do play it instead of the Flying Pikachu. But if you play the Flying Pikachu, it's not as uh, easy to abuse because it's got that extra HP and it's still a free retreater. So your opponent can go after your Mareep, but there's not as a low HP Pokemon like the Zero Aura to chase anyways. Um, and this means even if Jake does play the Echoing Horn to be able to go, like, KO the Sheep, put the Sheep back on the play, um, like that, um, and also gets the Raichu here pretty early. I don't know why we're grabbing the Raichu yet. I would, I would, as Christian, I would wait to see what my opponent's playing, I feel like. Because if it is, if they are playing Tina, you do want the Raichu. You're okay with the Raichu being in play, but if it's not, then the Raichu makes a little bit less sense to get this aggressively. It's not the end of the world, I guess, but, um, Yeah. So it's like the, the value of the Flying Pikachu. So I just wouldn't put Zero Aura in play here as Christian. I just wouldn't have put the Zero Aura in play at all. Um, yeah, I, would, I just would not have put the Zero Aura in play here as Christian. I didn't like put the Zero Aura coming into play. <clears throat> you should just like, uh, you should just like chilled and just like held it. And also attaches to the Raichu. What are we attacking with on this next turn? All right, this is a bad attachment here. Why are we attaching to Raichu? We don't want to attach with, attack with Raichu into anything. You get two off the generator though. Going to the Mirai Both should go to the Maridon here. Raichu is just like a super super inefficient attacker early on. Um, I wouldn't have hate to see an energy be attached to the Raichu. I don't hate not attaching to the Raichu here, but I don't like that attachment to the Raichu. Also, attaching to the Raichu before you use the generator is also like not a good play. You should definitely... Um, you should... Uh, oh, wait. We got the, the Raichu's attack. Okay, okay. I guess that makes sense. Use the Raichu, charge up an energy. Okay, I take it back. It's like not that big of a deal, to be honest. I forgot about the... I always forget about the attack, to be honest. Why do you attach before generator? Yeah, you should definitely generate her first, but I don't hate the attachment on the Raichu. So, like, Christian was already ahead and thinking about that. You maybe want to... Well, actually, I don't hate that. You don't really want to attack with Raikou. Well, Maridon just eats up so much more energy, so it gets a little bit risky to set up Maridon over Raikou. I don't know about this sequence here. I mean, this was, like, a bad sequence. Like, what Christian should have done was play Escape Rope, send up Zeraora, use Generator, decide where to put the energy on that, and then if you want to go into the Raichu, I feel like that's fine. Um... Going to the Raichu there is fine, I guess. Yeah, we're to the Raichu is, like, fine. Um, but then I'm not sure about... Yeah, do you want to attack with Raikou versus Maridon on the next turn? You don't know what you're up against, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, I'm pretty sure Jake is playing, like, a Turbo Lost Box. Um, 
Did I go to Pittsburgh? Nope. Yeah, the first attack from Raichu is like fine here. I didn't really think about that to be honest. That's like fine. I like if you're gonna yeah, like doing that is just like not a big deal to be honest. Um all right, we'll see if Jake can get off that turn attack. I actually just saw a in Jake's hand, I just saw a char the big thing. The thing that gives your basic Pokemon a lot of HP. What is it called? Someone help. <laughs> I forget what it's called, but it's in Jake's hand. Uh I forget what it's called, but it's in Jake's hand. So that's actually a pretty big deal in this matchup. Because if you can get that down on it, there it is. Bravery Charm. If you can get that down onto a Dragonite or a Raikou early on, uh, Christian actually doesn't have a great way to resp respond to it besides burning all the energy off of a Raichu. But like if we see like a turn one attack here from Jake with Dragonite, that could just be game with the Bravery Charm. That might just be enough to like end the game right there. Uh, now Christian could play the Lost Vacuum, which means Christian could recover a little bit later on with that if at least you can get enough damage on it. But um, like I said, though, it's going to be tough for Jake to actually get the... The turn one attack here because they opened up with the Sable Eye because they had the Sable Eye start over a comfy start. Um, <clears throat> there's the hard retreats. I don't know if I love was the Greninja not. I think I would have liked to have seen Jake use the Greninja to start the whole sequence here, to be honest. Yeah, I think the extra cards I think make a bigger deal here for Jake. And now we drew into double switch card here, and now Jake doesn't have a way to actually use Greninja and it's going to end the turn with double comfy because I don't think there's a culture that. Yeah, that was a mistake from Jake. Should have opened the turn. Let me go back on this actually. That's like not a good sequence there from Jake. The beach court is no, it's not a beach court. How are we starting this? This card's on the wrong side. Okay, switch card. Yeah, see, we should just start with Greninja here. We should just start with Greninja here. Greninja should just be used first. The first thing we do at the beginning of this turn is Greninja. Well, I mean, you can use the Battle VIP Bass first. That's fine. Well, you have to use the Battle VIP Bass to get the Greninja. Sure. But then we should Greninja, um, and then it's Battle VIP Pass versus Raikou in the hand. We have a Nest Ball though. So Raikou makes sense to grab here, I think, because if we end up with a... Because Raikou's a good attacker in this matchup. And if we get a four seal stone, then we have a target for the four seal stone. So I don't hate the Raikou keep here, um, which I think is what Jake goes for. Um, actually, in the hand, there is the... No, not quite. But yeah, we should use Greninja right here. Greninja should have been used as the first thing I said. Um, definitely should uh, Greninja first there. Uh, but now we see the Nest Ball gets another Comfy. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, they should have just gone with Greninja first there. Because, like, if you Greninja into, like, a Switch card, that can get you into another Comfy. But if you retreat your Comfy into a Comfy and then only get a Switch card but not an energy, you can't Comfy, you can't continue your draw power. You have more odds of continuing your draw uh, draw chain with using Greninja first than using Comfy first. And we see that literally just happen here as two Switch cards get flipped on this Comfy. And you can't Switch card to use Greninja, so. I think it's just going to be a pass here from, from Jake. Or it should be a pass here. I don't think we're doing anything else. Um, yep, yeah, pass, there it is. Um, but the, the deck, or the draw was cut two cards short there. So, like, if we just see Jake top deck a Colvish next turn, like, Jake could have played that Colvish this turn, uh, guaranteed. So, that's why you want to use, like, usually you just want to force Greninja first. Just use Greninja, guarantees you plus one extra card. It's easier to chain Comfies than it is to chain, than to use Greninja. Like, Greninja is specifically limited to energy. Um, so if you only have the one energy to work with, you probably want to use Greninja. Um, Yeah. We'll see. There's the Iono play, though, from Christian. Could Christian have not Ionoed here? Hold up. That's not a very good Iono there. I'm, like, half paying attention here, to be honest. There's a Maridon use. Gets a... What did they get off the Maridon? They got another Raichu? Bro, why are we getting another Raichu? This can't be correct. Who is this? Is that fine? I don't know. Maridons just have more HP. I think you want to go with the Maridon. I don't know what the hand here is from Christian, but you ideally don't want to Iono. Jake literally did, like, nothing last turn. Um... Yeah, I don't love the Raichu bench. I don't think it's that big of a deal. You're probably attacking with Raichu this turn anyways. Well, kind of. you kind of want you kind of want to retreat and attack with Maridon with a Bravery Charm. I'm trying to think if we can never just, like, why Raichu in this matchup at all. You need Raichu to, like, KO Dragonite. Um, you need Raichu to, Raichu to KO Dragonite. But you don't want two Raichus in play. I don't think you want two Raichus in play. That feels like overkill. Yeah, I'm trying to think if we just ever don't. Do we ever just not Iono here? But I don't know. Because you could just go Raichu knock out the active. That's like, okay. Because Jake like did nothing last turn. So you don't really want to Iono Jake. I think just maybe attacking with Raichu is just better here, to be honest. Yeah, I don't I don't really like the... Just discard the 200 after the Raichu knock. I don't know. The Iono just becomes so much worse. And you're like behind a draw support. That one's tough, to be honest. I'm actually not too sure about this. What the best play is here, to be honest. I'm actually not sure what the best play is here. Um, like, yeah, you really don't want to Iono Jake. Jake did literally nothing. So I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of iffy on that one. We'll see how it goes. Uh, there are the Bravery Charms, though. There's two Bravery Charms. That was literally, like, as good of a draw as it could get here for Christian. Also, the Ultra Ball as an out to the... Has the energy... This, this hand is just actually nuts. <laughs> this hand is actually disgusting. 
Christian's hand here is super gross. Um, you probably want to retreat and attack with uh, Preaching the Prime sub there. Spilled Horchata. <laughs> Welcome to the Rat Pack. We're all out of houses. We've got plenty of rats. You probably want to retreat. See, the Bravery Charm on this is not as good because the Dragonite still KOs this. You probably want to retreat to the Maridon, attack with Maridon this turn. Um, so I don't like this sequence here from... I don't hate a, a Bravery Charm ending up on a Raichu, but I would, I would, we want to retreat and attack with Maridon here for sure. Because like this still gets KO'd. The, with the Bravery Charm, you still get KO'd by Dragonite. So you should retreat and attack with a, Mar a Maridon with a Bravery Charm. You just want to minimize the potential. Instead with the Bravery Charm on the Zeraora. You could still even put the Bravery Charm on a Zeraora there as well. You could still do that. Um, has one card in hand. I have no idea what this is. The attached return. Knockout. Has to discard two energy. Should definitely get rid of... I don't like getting the one off... Uh, is it always universally correct to always no there's no such thing as anything ever being universally correct so you want to remove that first thing you have to do you want to remove the idea of universally correct from your mind as a, ever as a thing ever in pokemon it's n nothing is ever universally correct even if it's like 99.1 when that one percent comes up you want to make sure you act on that one percent um you want to ideally you want to like theoretically, you want to conceal cards before you do anything. Before before you do anything else, the first thing you want to do at the beginning of every turn, theoretically, is conceal cards. But depending on if you have an energy or not, or if you only have one energy, and you're not sure if you want to attach it, use it to retreat or Greninja away. You might start with something else to begin your sequence. So, but nothing is ever universal ever in the Pokemon TCG. There's no such thing as anything any sequence ever being universal. It doesn't exist. Um. Yeah, I don't like Christian's sequence here. I hope <laughs> I hope Christian gets punished and the Dragonite comes out and bonks this right you. Um, you probably want to get rid of two energy off the act. I don't know. Using Raichu over and over again is just super inefficient. Like, it's just super inefficient to just chain Raichu. You just don't want to attack with Raichu over and over again. We should have seen a retreat to the Raichu. Or ideally, I think a Maridon with a uh, Bravery Charm makes the most sense to attack with here from Christian. Because um, that way Dragonite can't KO you. But a Dragonite KO here seems pretty good from Jake, to be honest. And we're starting with a Pokestop use here. Looking pretty good so far. Getting rid of a Water. Get rid of the Force Seal Stone. That kind of sucks. But gets the Gate. Goes a little deeper. Did not get rid of a Chorus, most importantly. Um, and then we should see Greninja get used here. I want to see Greninja get used. Greninja! I guess we're thinking about... You just need the cards. I don't think you have the cards here to, like, sequence it like this as Jake, to be honest. Maybe you do. Maybe you do have the cards here to sequence it like this. Because I think Jake's trying to hold that water energy to attach that to the Dragonite. That has to be the reason here to do it. There's the Echoing Horn. Uh, and gets rid of it. It does play the Echoing Horn, though. But can vacuum the Bravery Charm off the bench there or at some point. That should definitely be the target for that. I'm pretty sure Jake's hand just sucks, though. We do see the Greninja out of the Psychic here, though. It's probably fine, to be honest. Overall. Okay, there's a four seal stone, but we have no Dragonite. Man, is this hand just dead? This hand is... Yeah, there's nothing here. Wow. All right. We're cooked here. Uh, <laughs> there's five in the... We can get to seven. Oh, wait. Hold on. We can attack with Greninja here. All right, hold on. We're cooking. We're cooking. That doesn't mean we won't have the vacuum to get rid of the Bravery Charm, but we could do that later, I guess. Yeah, never mind. We can get to seven here as, uh, as Jake. Here comes the vacuum. All right, we got the seven here. Okay, okay. I thought we were doing nothing this turn. And keeping the water did end up working out. That might have been the better play. Like I was saying, I think I would like to have seen just Greninja get used. But based on what we were trying to do for turn here as Jake, it maybe does make more sense to have not done that. Two water in the discard with a psychic. You don't really want to play Super Rod here, so I'm hoping Jake does not have another. I'm gonna we're gonna call Jake out here if there's another water in the in the deck here. We'll see. See if we've got to call Jake out or not. Is there a water? There's another water in the deck. Okay, so misplay. Here from Jake. That's why you check your prize cards. I'm almost positive I saw another water, water in there. So Jake should not have Super Rod in there. Super Rod there was definitely a mistake. Now your deck is loaded up with three extra energy cards that you don't want to draw into because your Greninja is about to die. And that doesn't actually become draw support for you. You want to draw into... Uh, what do you want to draw into? You want to draw into Chorus and something to hold that four seal stone. <laughs> so definitely another mistake here. Or definitely a mistake here from Jake. Uh, yeah, the Flaffy is dying here. The other 90? Oh, wait, to the right you? Mm, I don't know. Dragonite still wanted KOs that. I don't know if we want to put the energy. I think you just put the damage here on the Zero Aura. I think Jake should just put 90 on the Zero Aura and then Sableye it later at some point. Sableye the Zero Aura later to clean it up. Like the 90 to the right you? I don't know. As of right now, Christian's only real good attacker is the right you. So if Christian sends up the right you next turn, you might want to be able to respond to it. 90 to the charm rat seems super sus. Yeah, 90, yeah, especially the one with the... If it comes to the active, you want a Dragonite, want to KO that thing, I feel like. And if it stays on the bench, 
Uh, yeah, like the 90 to the other Raichu was actually pretty good as well. Or actually maybe the Raikou, because you don't know if Christian plays the three Bravery Charm or not. So if you put it on the other Raichu, it could get Bravery Charmed. So I think 90 here never makes sense. It should either go to the Zero Aura or the Raikou. But if they do play, if Christian plays the third Bravery Charm, which they could, some people play three, they could put that on the Rhydon or the Raichu if you target one of those with the Greninja. I think the best target neutrally here is always the Zero Aura, though. I think the best target always to just hit with the Greninja damage is the Zero Aura. Because you do want to go after the Zero Aura at some point as a knockout. Because you already got rid of your Echoing Horn, which means you're not going to Echoing Horn the Marip at any point ever. So, um, I don't love that choice there from, I don't love that choice there from Jake. But the what's called did work out, like I said. Holding the Water Energy did work out. I guess for the hand composition, it maybe made sense, to be honest, to hold the Water Start with the Comfy, hope for the Comfy into the Chorus, because the water for the attachment for turn to actually pull off a Dragonite attack or a Greninja attack does make more sense. But the she definitely should have opened up with Greninja on that first hand off the rip. Um, and then, like I said, did not really want to... Ooh, whoa! Well, I guess... <laughs> so you never do this. You don't ever bench this Marie Pierre. Because this makes it super easy for Jake. This makes it that much... I think Dragonite's prized. But they can always get heavy ball, right? Is heavy ball and what's it called? Yeah, you never bench this sheep here because this makes it. This makes that this makes Jake's play look genius. To be honest, Jake's like, you know what? If I put ninety on your zero aura, what, I, you're gonna bench the Mareep next turn. I want to just sableye the Mareep and put six damage counters there. Why would I waste ninety damage on a zero aura when I know you're benching that sheep next turn, bro? Now the ninety on the Raichu is still awkward. I don't really like this ninety on this this Raichu. I think it should probably be on the the Raichu, like I said. But maybe Jake just knew. Jake just knew Christian was going to bench another Mareep. And this is a terrible play from Christian. Because this, this, once again, makes the price trade so clean for Jake. Jake can go into a Sable Eye, KO the Mareep, set up damage somewhere else to pick on something else. Like, theoretically, Jake's price trade could have been, well, now that this Mareep's on the bench, Jake could have gone 90 KO Sheep, 90 to Raichu. Uh, here we go. Christian comes back. Raichu, KO, Greninja. For whatever reason, we're attacking with Raichu instead of something that keeps its energy in play. Then we go Sable Eye, KO, Mareep, build up more damage on the Raichu. Then we go Sable Eye again, KO the Sheep, build up damage on the things with the big charm so that way Raichu can return. Then we go Raichu or Dragon. I get our last two prize cards as Jake. Theoretically. We'll see what Christian has here. One card in hand. It's a boss. Goes boss on the comb. Boss on the Sable Eye. Okay, this is also really bad. Jake is like living on. Oh, also, I think Jake misplayed out of the last hand as well. Let's just confirm. Actually, and this might actually, this might actually lead, dude, this is actually, all right, so Jake has basically been struggling along this game, slightly chugging along, whatever you want to call it, not like drawing super well. I almost, actually, Christian here, I think should attack with the Raikou. I think Christian should, no, you can't attack with the Raikou, never mind. Jake should have benched, there's a second Sableye in Jake's hand that Jake should have benched, because if Jake gets Judge or Iono, do you want the second Sableye in play? Why wouldn't you want to be more set up, right? Being more set up always makes more sense. See, we see the Sableye right here on Jake, that Jake chose not to bench. Also, there's a pal pet. Oh, wait, this was actually really bad from Jake. Wait, did this come off the prize cards? Maybe these came off the prize cards. What came off the prize cards here? Let me see here. Let me let me see what came off the prize cards here, because I don't remember what came off the prize cards. Oh, the pal pad came off the prize cards. Okay, so you couldn't play the pal pad here as Jake. Jake did get the pal pad off the prize cards. Okay. But the second Sableye should have been benched for sure, because, like, um, why wouldn't you want to be more set up, right? If I ask you if you're going to get uh, going to your next turn, do you want two Sableyes in play to potentially use light later or one if you get judged? You're like, well, I want two. And the bench space here for Jake is like super open, right? We got pl plenty of bench space to work with. Definitely just throw that Sableye on. The pal pad did come off the prize cards, though, so we couldn't have made that happen. That's fine. Um, but it's funny because, it, like, so with, and Christian should realize that Jake has been kind of like, Jake has not, not been like having like, like, look at Jake's bench. Jake's bench sucks. The best thing to knock out here for Christian is definitely the Greninja. Getting greninja again here would suck. Like, it would suck if Christian gets greninja again. And it's not hard for Jake to just be like, all right, Mirage Gate. Uh, knock out Marie, hit something else. Like, that's pretty straightforward for Jake here, right? Um, Pinox is Jake, by the way. Yeah, I assumed, I assumed. Um, so this is a terrible play from Christian. The best draw power on Jake's board is Greninja. The best attacker on Jake's board is Greninja. Uh, <laughs> the most setup Pokemon on Jake's board is also Greninja because it has an energy, I guess. But I guess Sableye is pretty easy to set up, so I don't know if that really qualifies. And then Christian's like, no, nah, I'm going to bench a sheep and KO your Sableye. Of all things to KO, there's, the, the better attacker is Greninja. It also provides draw power. And then the other thing that provides draw power is Comfy. There could be like an argument here. to I don't think there's ever an argument to chase the Sableye here. There's an argument to KO the Comfy, though, because for Jake to get to three in the Law Zone... Um, for Jake to get to three in the Law Zone here, Jake needs Colrus Comfy. But if you take away the Comfy... Then all of a sudden, if they only have Colrus but can't get a Comfy working, then all of a sudden that could lead to not getting that many in the Lost Zone and then the Sableye is not active. So there's like, I could see that as an argument, but the best Pokemon on Jake's board is Greninja, by far. Like, not even close. So this boss here from Christian is definitely not good. And then once again, we're, we're because of Christian's board, 
uh, because of Seti up Raichu, Christian is once again attacking with Raichu instead of a Raikou or a Maridon, which would have been way better to be attacking with one of those two Pokemon or set up both and switch between them. Attack with a Maridon first with a, with a Bravery Charm to get around the potential of a Dragonite play, retreat into the Raikou after that. Sure, you're giving up the uh, Dragonite play at that point or even like a Raikou knockout, but whatever. Um, but now Christian is losing <laughs> two more energy in play to KO a Sableye. And then if Jake KOs the Mareep, Christian is just running out of energy in play. There's like no energy in play here for Christian. So you can't keep up this... This onslaught of one prizes from Jake with a with a Raichu it just doesn't happen. You just can't do it. It's not enough. You don't have enough energy. So from here, Jake's in a great spot at this point. Attack with Greninja or Sableye. KO the Mareep. Set up some damage and play somewhere. We want to go after these lower HP, guaranteed low HP Pokemon. The Raichu and the uh, Raikou. To be honest, from Jake here, yeah, this like this 90 damage on the Raichu is like almost like fully wasted here on the active because it has the Bravery Charm. Now hold on, but there is probably another four Seal Stone in Jake's deck, so we could make that make that work. I think actually here as Jake, you probably want to attack with Sableye and then plant a follow up with a Greninja on a later turn. Either work though, if we can get one of these attacks off, we'll be in a pretty good spot here uh, for Jake. We only have seven in the Lost Zone right now, so currently Jake is guaranteed an attack with the Greninja, um, and actually it's. Jake maybe should have played the Mirage Gate to be to start the sequence, to be honest. Just like Mirage Gate to the Greninja. I wouldn't have hated to see that. Um, um I wouldn't have hated to see that. And we had the switch card in hand there for Jake as well. So I think Jake could have committed to the idea of using Greninja and then wait and see on how the save live play went. Um there's a Raikou in the hand there alongside a Nest Ball. Probably go with the Raikou because you have the four seals to play. You don't really want to use the Raikou here, because you do put a two prizer in play for your opponent to potentially take advantage of. Mm, so I don't like benching it, but maybe you do just want to use a coal wrist. That's a tough call here, to be honest, from Jake. And then we do see the bench of the Raikou. Um, but like I said, you want to attack with Sableye or Greninja here as Jake. You want to attack with Sableye or Greninja. You see the four seal stone. It's probably just going to be a coal wrist. Just dig through the deck, try and set up more threats in play, stuff like that. Um, and I would like to see a Mirage Gate even get played this turn from Jake. Like, like right now from Jake before the coal wrist, probably. Well, actually, I don't know. Now we could let go of the Sableye route. So maybe you do wait. Or on the Mirage Gate. Because you have like super odd Mirage Gate to that like, combo on a later turn. I don't hate holding it now, actually, to be honest. But there's the Mirage Gate use. We'll see what Jake loads up here. This will tell us what Jake's going to go with the attack. All right, that's what I was afraid was going to happen. <laughs> I was afraid Jake was going to go the Raikou route. I don't think you ever attack with Raikou here. If you take out... Like, Christian has a one-card hand off of going boss KO... Christian would specifically need Generator Boss to then boss KO your Raikou with Raichu with Raichu, and then would be left with zero energy in play, which I think then you're still in a fine place as Jake. I think you always remove this Mareep from play and just, like, trap Christian into the Raichu play over and over again. I think you remove the Mareep with Sableye or Greninja and then build up damage somewhere else. I don't think you ever care about KOing this Raichu this turn. You remove the engine of the Mareep. And then if Christian does have Generator for two into boss KO your Raichu, you're like, okay, whatever. You used four energy. You have zero energy in play now. Who cares? You drew two more prize cards. You have four, zero energy in play. You attack with Greninja or Sableye again. Uh, and then if, if Christian is able to set up an actual threat on the next turn, you can respond to that with a Dragonite, and you should still be in just like a perfectly fine play spot from there, Jake, if you can find the Dragonite play, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I go into the Raikou, I go into the Raikou play almost feels like you're giving Christian like a, I, that's why I almost didn't like benching the Raikou, but I think benching the Raikou to get the force system was probably fine because of Christian only having a one card hand. Um, but I would definitely want to see this Mareep get removed from play, um, and not put a two prizer on your active here as Jake. Um, but I, I guess as long, mm, yeah, I don't love this. I don't love it. I don't love it. It also means like this damage on the Raichu is that much more wasted because you're like over KOing with the Raikou here, probably. So it becomes like that much more of a waste of damage. I mean, the chance that the Raikou gets responded to, I guess, isn't that high to be honest. As long as Jake doesn't bench another Pokemon, the Raikou can't return KO or anything like that. So we need a three energy Maridon. So as long as Jake doesn't KO, as long as Jake doesn't actually bench another Pokemon here, I guess it like, it's, it will, it's going to work out like, okay, to be honest, it won't be like that bad. Um, yeah, it'll be like, okay. So it should be a KO with the Raikou here. I feel like this, um, I would actually probably play the, I would play the vacuum here as Jake and I would get rid of my own Pokestop to stop Christian being able to dig for generator. Yeah. So I would play this vacuum. Oh, actually you could, oh, no, 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 that's not what I thought it was. What is that? That's Dragonite. So you should vacuum away your own stop here. Cause you don't want to give Christian more outs to generator. I don't think take that away. I wouldn't hate to actually see that. Uh, no, don't bench. Wait, did we not KO? 5, 6, 160, 100. One, no, we KO'd. But now, Christian can respond with a Raikou knockout. I don't like that. Wait. 
100, 120, 1, 200. Yeah, that's a that's a big mistake there from Jake. Fetching Dragonite, not needed to get the KO. And then also now you oh, now Christian only needs two energy to get a knockout, which means the the reason that's actually a big deal is because like if Christian goes Maraid on knockout Raikou. Um, wait, Jake said what? Three prize cards? Yeah. If Christian goes Maraid on knockout Raikou and you respond with Dragonite knockout Maraid and you take three energy out of play, but now if they respond with a Raikou knockout Raikou and they respond with Dragonite knockout Raikou, it allows Christian to preserve one energy in play. Uh, which could lead to the Raichu all of a sudden being able to KO the Dragonite in response, whereas otherwise it wouldn't have been able to happen. Um, so that's a mistake there. That's a big mistake there from Jake. I don't even think we should have... Like, benching the Raikou, I think, was probably fine because Christian had a one-card hand, and you just want to keep progressing your board state. But attacking with Raikou, I think, was just a mistake in general. We should have just seen a Sableye or a Greninja attack here from, from Jake. Uh, and Jake did have the second, and that would have actually been perfect for... It would have been like perfect for Jake as well, because Jake does have the second vacuum and does play it. So that 90 damage that was put on that other Raichu previously wouldn't have been wasted because we actually would have been able to remove that bravery charm and bring that Raichu's HP down and like get it in range for it to be taken out. Um get it in range for it to be taken out and actually not have like it, it was a mistake initially to actually even hit that Raichu with the Greninja, but like we could have fixed it with the 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 vacuum. Uh, but we see Christian going in. And see, this is what I was saying. We should probably give it a Pokestop because, like, one of Christian's outs here, we should probably give it the Pokestop here because Christian just, like, needs generators, right? And immediately goes for the Pokestop use. Mills, a Flaffy, Mills, a Research, gets an Ultra Ball. Does that keep Christian in the game? What is the hand here for Christian? I can't tell. They have an Ultra Ball in the hand. I can't, I can't tell what else is in the hand, though, to be honest. Christian maybe should have used Maridon before using that as well. Oh, there's a Judge. Okay, so they're not completely dead in the water. I'm, Christian didn't use Christian. Does Christian, Christian might just not have another basic in the deck to be honest. But you do need another basic so your Raikou, Raikou can actually KO Jake's Raikou. So you definitely should have started with the Maraidon use here from Christian. Then maybe use the Pokestop or use the Judge. I don't know which one should come first, the Judge or the Pokestop. You got me, but I don't think po using Pokestop first is like that bad. Uh, there's a billion hand. There's also a path. I don't hate holding the path, but this is definitely not a. Wait, did, was that an attachment for turn to the Maridon? Did we attach a Maridon there? We did, right? Yeah, so this is also just like a misplay from Christian because you decrease your odds of actually knocking out this Ra If you don't knock out this Raikou of Jake's, you literally just lose the game as Christian. The game just ends instantly. So like you have to knock it this Raikou out and you knock it out if you just bench a Pokemon and get two energy on the Raikou. But now when you find a generator here as Christian, when you find a generator here as Christian, you have to hit, and there's the Maridon use a little bit late. Um, you have to hit two energy off the generator. So, yeah, definitely a mistake there from, from Christian for sure. Bad sequence. I think that's a path in hand. Uh, retreating to the Mareep. Three prize cards left for Jake. I, mean, I guess that's fine. You want to keep around your own pivot. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Wait, where did the Maridon go from? Oh, no, we Ultra Balled for a Maridon here as Christian. Okay, that's fine. I guess maybe that's why... No, it doesn't make a difference, I don't think. Um, okay, and I'm trying to think about the... Yeah, do you play Path here or do you not play Path here as Christian? You probably don't play Path. You probably need the Pokestop yourself. Yeah, you probably need the Poke... Well, you need a lot. <laughs> you need a lot here. All right, Marie Pass, and we're headed over to Jake... Uh, got judged, uh, and it looks like used Pokestop immediately. Am I trolling? Maybe I'm trolling. Okay, draw for turn. I don't think we've used the Pokestop here from Jake. Has a comfy, benches it. Has the Bravery Charm for the Dragonite, which is pretty chill. The rest of the hand, not very good. Fleet-footed. Could have used the Mirage. I don't know what energy is left in the deck here, but we could have Mirage get it first here. Has an Escape Rope. You don't really need to. I would use the... I would set up this Dragonite as much as possible if I was, if I was Jake here. I would set this up as much as possible. I would maybe even go ahead and rip that. Um, I would maybe just go with the Pokestop here and use the Pokestop. Maybe shuffle the deck first. I don't know if we want to really care about shuffling the deck first or not. Um, I think they're talking about how many cards Jake has in hand, but it seems correct to me. Unless I'm trolling. I could be trolling here. That's always possible. Okay, draw for turn, bench comfy, use fleet footed, at five cards in hand. Everything looks fine to me. I don't know the judges are on about in this one. But yeah, I would like to see the, I think I would like to see the Mirage get used here. Just load up the uh, Dragonite. Getting a Psychic Energy here also probably makes sense as well. Potential from the Sableye, but also like more energy in the deck to potentially use with Greninja is pretty good as well. 
Um, you could use escape rope here as well. I don't really hate using escape rope here. Also, like I said, I I don't I think I maybe would have ripped the Pokestop to begin the turn with. I think I maybe would have just used Pokestop. I don't really hate using Pokestop here either. I think I would have started the turn with that because now we have an extra energy in the deck. We don't want to mill with the Pokestop, so we would want to start with the Pokestop if we're going to use it. But we'll see if Jake thinks it's correct to use Pokestop or not. I'm like not 100% sold one way or the other. Also, could use both Switch cards and use a Comfy here, um, but I don't think that's necessary either. Um, there's the knockout. Oh, the prize card was actually Jake prize. I think that's actually a Roxanne off the prize cards. That might have been the Roxanne. The Drake prize. Jake prized Drake. Jake prized like three, um, um. Jake prized like three supporters and Palped, but has been pulling them out of the prize. I mean, there's still the Clara and the Chorus prize, but all right, generator from Christian. Trying to find the energy here to attack with. Now it ha like has to be Mariah. Oh, actually, the co also the Comfy Bench. This Comfy Bench is also bad from Jake as well here because now you don't know how many Pokemon Christian has left, but you, you shouldn't make it easier for Christian to get the knockout on your Raikou. You um, should force more liabilities and play it. Well, actually, I don't know if I agree with that. It depends if you think Christian has enough basics left or not. What do you need? 100, 200? Yeah, it depends if you think Christian has enough basics left. If you don't think Christian has enough basics left, then you should definitely not have benched that Comfy as Jake. To be honest, I don't know how many basics Christian has left. Switch off the Pokestop, retreats to the Raikou, and we're going to see a Fleet Footed here for one, I believe. I think they're just confirming that the Pokestop was done correctly there. Okay, Fleet Footed for one. Lightning Energy. I don't think that's doing enough. I think we're going to next game here. Yeah, all right. Next game, pretty sloppy from both sides, to be honest. Both sides played pretty sloppy. Um, Jake got did get pretty hard, far ahead eventually, but the reason Jake got so far ahead is because Christian, like, because of Christian's early attacks were just, like, poor choices of what to attack with. If Christian just had attacked with Raikou and Maridon over Raichu, Christian would have been in a spot that kind of forced a lot more out of Jake, and then Christian overbenches the, the one prize Pokemon. Like, the Marie Bench was, like, really bad. The second Marie Bench was really bad. Zeraora with a Bravery Charm, plus one Marie. I don't know. Um, Jake also plays the Echoing Horn, which is going to make things tough for Christian to have control over that. But you can probably keep your bench full after the first Marie goes down. So this game, I definitely want to see Christian not put two one-prize Pokemon in play. Just put a Marie in play. Force Jake to chase it. Then keep your bench full with two prize Pokemon. Lock out the potential of the Echoing Horn. You might not always be able to keep it locked out, but try to. Uh, but you do want to force that first Marie in place. So either you can consistently get the advantage of the energy acceleration from the Flaffy, or you make Jake have to go chase it. Looks like Jake's being pretty aggressive here. Doesn't get... All right, that's got to be trolling. We're not allowing that. There's no way you don't get Cram at least here, right? Let me see these prize cards. All right, so if Chris... All right. How's this going to go? You have Greninja, Comfy... You at least grab Cram here. So the outcome of this is Christian whiffs a turn one attack. And then you just attack with Cram for turn, maybe. And that's fine. Christian hits a turn one attack. And you have Cram on your bench. And maybe you attack with something bigger, like the Greninja or a two prize Pokemon. But you have three, you have one, two, you have four, three bench spaces to work with for attackers. You may as well just grab Cram here. There's no reason to not grab Cram here. Either you have bench spaces yeah, for four attackers. You have bench spaces for four attackers here. Yeah, there's no way you don't grab Cram here. Or to be honest, maybe even Dragonite? No, you show it's not it's not safe to put a two prize in play immediately. Because if we see like a Maridon plus a Bravery Charm, that's a kind of annoying to you would probably rather I mean if you even if you see that attacking with Dragonite's not terrible to be honest. Actually, to be honest, the more I think about it, I kinda like the idea of just grabbing Dragonite here. You definitely take something. You don't take nothing. Taking nothing here is trolling for sure. You gotta get something here. Cram or Dragonite. I don't know which one, but you always take something here. You pick one of them. You have the bench base to work with. If you're afraid of putting a two prize in play too aggressively. If you're afraid of putting a two, a pro, a two prizer in, in play too aggressively, you just take a cram. If you're not, if you don't think that's a concern in this matchup, then you take the dragonite. I'm not going to overly think about which one's correct here. I'm just going to go ahead and say it's correct to take one of them. You do have a nest ball in here in the hand here still for Jake, but you don't want to have to like play this next ball. Um, you don't have to like play this next ball next turn. Ne next turn is Jake to go get a cram when you could have just had a cram right now. So you should just like this should have, yeah, cram or dragonite. You were getting one of them. I don't know. We can decide which one later. None of them were gotten, so we're not going to overthink it. Um. Yeah, and then okay, thank goodness. <laughs> but actually, that's the wrong energy. You probably you want to discard the lightning energy because if you want the potential to attack with a Raikou or a Dragonite next turn, you want you do actually want a lightning energy in your discard pile because psychic energy is not something you're prioritizing to get back with Mirage Gate. But if you draw into all of your lightning energy, um 
then you might need to super rod one back in the deck to then mirage gate into play but like, like say, let's say you end your sequence with colrus and you colrus into all your lightning energy and you're like oh shoot uh well now i can't get any lightning energy into the discard pile and then put it back with the super rod and then use mirage gate so you actually want to you should prioritize putting a lightning energy in the loss zone here or in the discard pile here as jake so that's a mistake there you want to do that uh you want to do that first um yeah Switch cart. Yeah, so we're going to get the triple comfy use off here from Jake, which is solid. Goodbye, Manaphy. Pretty easy. And then attach retreat. We could still see a nest ball first here from Jake. Like, I wouldn't hate to see the cram get found out right now, but so I would still like to have seen the nest ball for the, the cram there, I think. Water energy versus Sableye. To be honest, Sableye's not that strong in this matchup. Greninja's a better attacker. Your two prizes are solid attackers. Cram sometimes does the exact same, Sable, exact same thing Sableye does. So I don't hate holding on to the water here as like more draw power for the next turn. And Jake agrees. I think it's like probably fine. Um, but once again, though, cram we should have seen a cram off that battle VIP buzz off because once again, like if Christian just has a slow first turn, doesn't get a turn one attack, all right, then you're like, all right, cool, that's cool with me. I get the first attack with like I get a first attack with a cram, which isn't as good as Greninja or a Sableye, maybe, or even like a two prize Pokemon. Uh, but you still get the first attack, and that already puts you ahead in this matchup to begin with, so you should be comfortable with that no matter what. Um, and then if the if Christian does get the turn one attack on the Comfy, you still have two other bench spaces to work with with for attackers so like this comfy gets ko in the active you send up a comfy crams on the bench you still have two bench spaces to work with attackers so you're not like locking yourself out of options to like play around uh judge and iono or something or like i said maybe the dragonite is the better grab there i think we should grab something though and i don't hate the the reason i kind of like the dragonite grab there from jake off that first battle vip pass is because um you know, christian does play judge and if you get judge and you draw to a four seal stone you're going to want a V Pokemon in play, right? Like, if you're attacking with Dragonite turn two to get two two prize cards and your opponent responds with getting two prize cards, you're okay with that trade off, right? That's not a bad trade off. So, um, that's the reason to like get Dragonite aggressively in some matchups when it's like you know your opponent can't, and also you know Christian can't KO your Dragonite turn one. When you know your opponent can't knock out your V Pokemon turn one, then it's sometimes just good to throw that in play just to be like, all right, like against like Lost Box against Artina, you always get Dragonite out immediately because you you want to attack with Dragonite that wants to be your main attacker immediately, and then if they uh, judge you. Uh, you know, now it's not just okay. I hope I draw into a Colrus. It's like, okay, I can draw into a Colrus or a Four Seal Stone or this or that. Um, so we once again see Christian overextending the bench with the one prizers. Like I said, probably should just be a Mareep. Just don't take the Zero Aura. You're going to have to play your energy a little bit safer at that point. And like, misplaying your energy is going to be more punishing because you don't have the pivot to work with. But like, it's just correct to not put two one prizers in play here. So another mistake from Christian again, doing it back to back games. Yes, the Mareep. Uh, but then also puts down the Zero Aura. Just the Mareep is what you want to do here. You don't want to put down the Zero Aura. We do have a bra bravery charm to protect the Zero Aura, which is probably where it should go. I actually don't know, to be honest. Uh, escape rope happening here. Zero Aura up to the active. Uh, still a little bit short on the energy. Oh, but there's a... We have a, do have a generator in hand, so we could see the uh, generator from Christian here. And then... Uh, yeah, I, I think just attack with Raikou here, to be honest. Like, you could try to attack with a Maridon, um, and then get a bravery charm on it, so that way, if Jake hits your Maridon with a Dragonite, Jake doesn't get the KO, but like... I'll just vacuum it later or clean it up with Sableye later. Um, I would put the Bravery Charm on your Raikou, though, so that way Jake can't go Raikou, your Raikou. You don't want that to happen. So I would like to see the Bravery Charm go onto the Raikou here because the Raikou is a lot easier. Or if Jake has a slower turn and can only punch your Raikou with like a cram, uh, the Bravery Charm still can get a lot of value there for that reason as well. So but we'll see what. Um, I think it's an Iono in the hand there for Christian. So how's that work? Don't oh, stop attaching to the Raichu. I stop attaching to. <laughs> dude stop if if a dragonite happens we can get to energy on our raichu okay if a dragonite ko's our raikou here we need four energy to ko it back if we're koing it back if we're return ko with the dragonite you need to get four energy in play you have zero currently on the bench besides this one attached to the raichu we need three more if we get three more two of them can end up on the raichu we can make it work we can make it happen stop attaching to the raichu if the Dragonite happens, we need four to begin with anyway. So three of those can make their way to the right. You put on a Maridon. Maridon's cool. Maridon's good. If they if Jake goes Raikou, knock out your Raikou, you don't want to respond with with right with Raichu, because then you just have no energy in play after that. Stop attaching. Don't attach to the rat. Let him sleep. He's chilling. Hmm. Here's the judge coming in from Judge uh, Christian should hundred percent judge here. The most disruptive play Christian can do here is judging. Hit him with the judge. We haven't played Cena, so yes, let's go. And this is why, once again, like, uh, like whether it be the Dragonite or the Cram, J Jake would just have a more developed board, right? And we could do something next turn, or more likely to do something next turn. But now Jake's board is underdeveloped from where it could be. Uh, and Jake honestly could have gone as far as like 
bench the cram and actually play one of those nest balls in hand to get a sable eye. I actually wouldn't have hated to see that from Jake. I wouldn't have hated to see Jake go or Dragonite plus nest ball for sable eye. Um, Dragonite plus cram also probably would have been fine as well, to be honest. Probably not the sable eye, honestly. Honestly, Dragonite cram on Jake's bench here would have been pretty sick. But now we have an underdeveloped, underdeveloped board here from Jake, which could definitely lead to Jake just not attacking this turn. Um, and you'd rather attack with it cram for 110 than nothing, right? So, um, yeah. So you just want to set up, you want to be as a setup as you possibly can. And what that comes down to is like having an understanding of matchups. So that way, you know, okay, I'm going to want this in this matchup. I'm going to want this in this matchup. So let's put it ahead. Let's put it in play right now. So that way, if I do get judged, if I do get Ionode, I, I'm more set up to be able to deal with the situation. Unless you like fear your opponent boss KO in it. But like Jake was under no threat of like a boss KO on, on that turn. So, uh, so super odd. He looks like getting rid of boss and escape rope. Boss can be pretty good in this matchup. Escape rope is always a solid card, of course. I think the other cards are like Pokey Stop, Nest Ball, Super Odd. How important is the Pokey Stop? I'm not sure, to be honest. Instead, he's giving up the Nest Ball and the boss, possibly. Seems fine. The Nest Ball doesn't seem like that pressing, to be honest. The Super Odd also isn't that pressing right now. I'm actually actually not sure what to take here, so I'm just going to let Jake cook and figure this one out because I'm actually not sure what I would take here, to be honest. Goes with the stop, the nest ball, stop the nest ball, and the super rod. I wonder why favoring the nest ball so much, to be honest. That's like the number one. That's the one I'm looking at. I was like, I don't know. Does that make that much sense to hold on to here? All right, we got six in the loss zone. Need to get up to seven. This is actually where one of the judge calls happens, and I think was a very good judge call overall. There's the vacuum hit. So right here... <clears throat> Uh, Jake does have the knock or Jake has the play here to like get the knockout on this uh, Raikou we're gonna vacuum away something here I'm actually not sure we're vacuuming away here is Jake I actually I think Jake makes a mistake here actually yeah I don't like that play actually because we're gonna vacuum away the nest ball now and then we're gonna see Jake go with the Raikou knock out the Raikou but actually forgets to play the vacuum before the four seal stone I believe here so uh, but I think Jake probably should have played the nest ball to get another better attacker into play and then vacuum away the comfy instead. Because three comfies is like overkill at this point, I feel like, as opposed to having like another attacker in play set up. So I don't like that choice there from Jake. Because I'm pretty sure the vacuum is going to be getting rid of the nest ball out of this hand. We'll see what Jake chooses to get rid of with the, the vacuum. And then still has... Because uh, you do want to knock out the active here as Jake. Or knocking out the active is fine. Honestly, though... I don't hate attacking with Greninja here, but I guess attacking with Greninja here, leaving your Raikou while you have a Raikou in play does not feel great. So I guess it's probably better to just like swim with the Raikou and get the knockout. And goes with the switch cart. Um, this is where one of the, the rulings co comes up that I was talking about. I don't know. Should we have used the Super Rod here though? What was the energy like in deck? Water. Psychic water. Okay, there's no lightning in the deck. Wait, really? Where the Lenny energy? Was there? I didn't think there was any prize. Maybe I'm trolling though. Probably shouldn't shuffle back the Comfy here. You don't want like a Comfy's just a dead card at this point. You don't want this Comfy in your deck. That's just like a dead card. You want a higher chance of seeing your better cards. There must be a Lightning prize because there's none in the Law Zone. I, there's maybe one prized. <clears throat> here comes a Pal Pad. Recovers a couple Colruses. You like to see that? There's only two in the list. I guess one is prized. In is there only two in the list? Yeah. So Jake goes through all the sequence like, oh wait, I'm going back in. Plays the Mirage Gate, but can't use the Mirage Gate because there's not seven in the Lost Zone. Um, and then they realize this, um, but Jake then immediately plays the Vacuum. So Jake immediately plays the Vacuum. Vacuums away the Escape Rope. Okay, keeps the Nest Ball. And then we can see the Switch Cart into the Raikou. Then I would like to maybe see the Nest Ball be played, but I guess if you maybe, actually at this point as Jake, maybe you don't know what you want. From the nest ball you maybe just not sure you might want dragonite you might want sableye holding on to it seems reasonable to be honest actually overall um so there was a missequence here from jake should have vacuumed first obviously and then used the mirage gate and then they catch it like right here um but because jake had just searched uh because jake had just searched his deck uh and because it was very obvious the sequence that was taking place instead of it this being like a two prize penalty or a game loss or whatever it feels like it normally is they actually just give jake a warning which i'm really i was really happy to see this resolve because like very obviously what happened it's very obvious the sequence was like gonna be sequenced that way uh whatever it might be now if jake had priors at this point i feel like it's fine did he fleet foot before attack yeah i believe jake did use fleet foot because there's only one card in hand and now there's two um because jake uh because jake didn't have any priors up to this point if, if Jake had a, a bunch of incidents of like messed up board states up to this point, then I think it would have been fair if Jake had gotten like a double prize penalty here or something like that. 
but uh, probably because of the lack of priors, and it's very obviously what happened, and Jake did um, just immediately play the vacuum afterwards, right? So, like, it's just pretty straightforward. It's obvious what was going on. Jake did also just search their deck before with four seal stone before using the Mirage Gate, so there wasn't, like, any more information to be gained about what should be, like, vacuumed away. Information had just been gained out of the deck. So these are, I would love to see these kind of judge calls happen more, where it's like, when we can reverse the board state pretty reasonably, as long as you haven't done it a bunch throughout the rest of the tournament, having it just be a warning instead of, like, a double prize penalty, I think is, like, the way we should see rulings end up more often. Because um, it feels like most of the time, this usually ends up in, like, a double prize penalty. Um... It just feels like it usually ends up more as a double prize penalty or a game loss. So it's, I'm, it's, I think it's really cool to see this. There's also another scenario that we'll get to eventually in a later game in top four, where it's like a similar scenario where it's like, okay, we can just correct the board state. I, they actually make them go back and replay all of this. Actually, that's actually interesting. I don't know why we're replaying this. Oh no, they're doing the replay. Okay. I was like, why are we making them replay this? <laughs> that was an actual replay. Okay. But yeah. It's cool that it's not a two prize penalty or a, uh, or a game loss. Um, very cool too. All right, over to Christian. Let's see what Christian can cook up this turn. Christian is definitely behind at this point, I would say, a little bit overall. Only one energy in play. Uh, maybe Christian's not that far behind, to be honest. A little bit. There's still, like, the two one prizes in play that um, Jake can take advantage of at some point through Greninja and Sableye and stuff like that. So I would still say Jake is, like, in a... Like, I would feel... If I was playing the Lost Box here as Jake, I would be feeling pretty comfortable. I'd be feeling like, okay, it's close, but I'm feeling fine. Um, I wouldn't say, like, Jake has a huge advantage or anything like that. But as long as Jake chains attacks from here with Sableye and Greninja... Uh, and then maybe clean up with a Raikou or a Dragonite, Jake should win this match still. So, yeah, if I was Jake, I'd still be feeling pretty... I'd be feeling pretty uh, pretty comfortable. Um, no bad intent. The Charmer's coming off either way. Yeah, exactly. Like, everything... That's how it was all going. Oh, it looked like Christian had six months. Dude. Why, dude? I... <laughs> dude, Christian has to stop attacking with Raichu. Christian has an obsession with the Raichu. There's a mill from the Pokestop. Gets the Ultra Ball, which can lead to a uh, Flaffy here. Um, once again, immediately attaches to the Raichu, though. Like, when you need four energy in play here for Christian to get off an attack for the Raichu to KO the Raikou. But you only need three energy for the Rhino attack. And then it conserves an energy in play. And you set up a higher HP Pokemon into your active, which means that, like, if Cram is the only option for Jake or something. Um, also, it, like, opens up a very easy line for Jake to just, like, ignore the Raichu and be like, oh, you attacked with Raichu. Okay, Greninja, snipe your Flaffy, put 90 on your Zero Aura. And then goes over to Christian, and it's like, oh, cool, I have zero energy in play. Let's cook. And it's just like, instead, if you have at least, like, if Jake responds with uh, Dragonite here, it's like, okay, whatever. Dra like, Dragonite KOs him right on. At least you still have one energy in play to work with as opposed to zero. But if Jake just doesn't want to respond with Dragonite, then as Christian, you're just like, okay, I have all this energy on my Rhydon. Play a switch card or retreat it, and now I'm attacking with something else. I still have a ton of energy in play to work with. Um, I said, <laughs> it feels like Christian, like, starting from square or square one every single time. And just like, I'm attacking with Raichu. I'm going the hard mode. I need to hit two energy off of every single generator. Um, and this card is the research. Okay, so we still need to see a generator and an energy hit for, here for Christian, or Christian is just cooked, and this game is basically over, I would say. Yeah, Christian needs to find a generator, needs energy. That's not that ridiculous for Christian to find. It's pretty reasonable, to be honest. Um, but it would be better to just... Uh, and if Christian would need that. Well, no, actually, that's not even true. If Christian just didn't attach the energy from this, if Christian attached this energy that's on this Raichu to the Maridon last turn, like he should have, the Maridon would already be powered up and ready to go from attach into attach Flaffy. But instead, Christian like makes it hard on themselves by attaching to the Raichu on the previous turn instead of the, the Maridon, and now you're in like a more awkward spot. Does have the generator though? Gonna play? Oh, doesn't play the Ultra Ball first. I would like to see Christian play that Ultra Ball first. Get rid of the research and the energy in hand. Keep the judge. Then add one more card out of the deck and then play the generator. As long as there's a card to thin out of the deck, otherwise it doesn't really matter, to be honest. But and there probably is gonna be an energy hit here still. And no way, bro. <laughs> Let's go! Dude, you'd love to see the punish. I actually that's I'm so hype right now. I'm so excited. Let's go, man. You love to see it. The punish. We could have had the Maridon could be cooking. The Maridon could be set up ready to cook. Instead, Christian just loves Raichu. I mean, maybe it's Christian's favorite Pokemon. Raichu might be Christian's favorite Pokemon, to be honest. Um, and we're not going to knock out this Raichu. So, yeah, that's going to be a t that's going to be tough to recover from. Also, didn't the now who plays the Ultra Ball, an action late, didn't it sufficiently thin out the deck before playing the Generator as well. So, another uh, missequence there from from Christian. 
Uh, so I could have, like, the Squawkabilly maybe wasn't in the top five. It doesn't matter, though. You always play the Ultra Ball first there. Thin out one more card, then play the Generator. Because no way, Ono got played last turn, so you're not playing around, like, dead cards on the bottom of your deck. At least I don't think. Uh, but the Mariana got used, so your deck already got shuffled, so it doesn't really matter. Because uh, you're just going to pass. So here's a really good opportunity for Jake to, like, really just, like, just win the game. I think you probably just leave the Zero Aura in the active here as Christian, to be honest. I think you should, yeah, because the Raikou 1-hit KOs, no matter what you send up, you don't want to give them a two-prize knockout, because then they then Jake only needs two more prizes. I want to attack here with this either. Or do you? You do 180? Okay. So you do 180 with this, and then what? Attack with Zero Aura for the knockout? I'm not going to overthink this one. I'm, if this might make sense, I actually don't know, to be honest. What does Zero Aura do? 20 damage? No, just 30 plus 30. I guess maybe this is, this is, this might not be terrible, to be honest. I don't hate this choice here from Christian. Um... A really good play here from Jake, though, would be Greninja KO. I think if Jake has... Well, is that better? I don't actually know. Um, if Jake has, like, switch into Greninja, Greninja KO... Oh, switch cart... Oh, dude. Switch cart the Raikou into Greninja KO Flaffy plus 90 on Zerora would be disgusting. That would just, like, win the game. Because then the Zerora can't even go boss KO the Raikou. And you took away their energy acceleration when they have zero energy in place. Yeah, so from Jake here, if Jake... I don't know if Jake can do it, but if Jake can do it... Um, also, like, attack with Raikou plus load of, like, something like the Dragonite would also be good. There's a lot, like, Jake's got a lot, but I think the best play here from Jake is switch cart to the uh, Greninja, Greninja KO Flaffy, 90 on Zero Aura, and then the game is basically cooked. But to be honest, if Jake just sets up a bunch of attackers this turn and then knocks out with Raikou, that's still pretty good. So if Jake just goes attack with Raikou, load up Zero Aura, or load up the, the Dragonite, that's, like, still pretty chill. I don't think, we should have used Fleet Footed, I think. I don't think Fleet Footed was used there. I could be wrong, though. There's a switch cart. Oh, but no Mirage Gate. There is a Ordinary Rod in hand, I believe. but Or Super Rod, I'm sorry. The Switch Cart gets us close. We do want to heal this Raikou. Dude, if we get the Greninja playoff, how do we lose? Have we even used Greninja yet here as Jake? That's also maybe another missequence, to be honest. Jake's a committed to this Dragonite idea. I don't like it. I, have Fle I don't know if Fleet Footed or Greninja has been used here. I don't think so. Yeah, so Fleet Footed a little bit late. What do we got? And then also attaching before using the Fleet Foot is also a mistake here from Jake. Um, there's the hit. I, we should heal the 30 damage here, though, for sure. This is a big mistake from Jake, because this allows the Zero Aura play from Christian to happen. And right now, Jake's on a 2-2-2 two, two, two prize trade right now. So C Jake wants to force up a 2 prize right here, so the Dragonite just can respond and the game ends. Um, so Jake, instead of attaching to the Dragonite, what Jake should have done... I don't think Jake used Greninja either. Jake should have also just used Greninja. I don't think Jake used Greninja. But we could have switched... Instead of attaching to Dragonite, you could switch cart the Raikou into a Comfy, use a Comfy, then retreat the Comfy, and then it forces up a 2 prize Pokemon, so... Um, so it's definitely a mistake there from Jake. Uh, but like I said, ideally should have looked for the switch cart Raikou into Greninja, Greninja, KO, Flaffy. That would have been that would have been beautiful, but not quite. So now the Zero does get to respond. Um, still, Jake's in a really good spot, but like, yeah, there's no reason to give your opponent a better situation than they might have had. Uh, yeah, otherwise than they might have had, right? There's no reason to like help your opponent. Like, if you can play better and make your opponent in a worse spot, you should try and do that, so... <laughs> the active nest ball. <laughs> yeah, so now the Zoroar can KO the Raikou, which we could have avoided. Jake could have avoided this. Like I said, Jake, all Jake had to do was just play the switch card, hard to treat the Comfy, which I think was a better play here. Also, like I said, didn't use Greninja, but probably should have used Greninja there to look for the Greninja play because the attack with Greninja here from Jake plus the switch card would have been, just, that would have been game over for sure. Like there's no way, there's, there's no recovering from that from Christian. So, um, and the Raikou would still be like set up as an attacker as well. It would just be absurd. Um, here we go, but it's just a judge here from Christian. Would have definitely loved something like an Iono. Here we go with a generator. Uh, it doesn't really... Dude, once again, the attachment... Dude, stop! We know, okay, maybe the Raichu is... No, 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 But we don't need... Okay, maybe it's fine. Maybe, all right, maybe the Raichu is fine this time. I'm, uh, we do need to respond to this Dragonite, potentially, or even boss KO it aggressively as Christian. But I feel like we still want the other option. Like, what if Jake just goes punch you with Cram next turn and KO your Zero Aura? As Christian, are you going to be like, well, I guess I have to attack with Raichu. You need to, like, Christian needs to, like, get some energy on both. You need to split it up a little bit. You need the options. Because Jake, what, what if Jake whiffs the Dragonite? You have to hope Jake whiffs, like, Dragon. Jake is not going to Dragonite your Zero Aura, first of all. Jake's not going to Dragonite your Zero Aura. That'd be silly. So you have to assume that's not going to happen. So if Jake has boss KO one of your two prizes with Dragonite on the next turn, you lose the game. So the only reason Dragonite's hitting the active here from Jake is if Jake is winning. So that way, so as Christian here, you have to assume Jake is going to be attacking with Cram, Sableye, or Greninja. And you don't want to attack with Raikou, Raichu, Raikou, Raichu, into Cram, Sableye, or Greninja. But then once again, Christian, Christian just loves Raichu, man. That's all I got here. Christian just loves Raichu. <laughs> Tunnels on the 2-2-2 for sure. Yeah, definitely. 
You gotta that that's the power of Lost Box. You have a lot of your win conditions are very flexible. That's why the deck's so good. It has so many different ways to beat you. But if you only play one way, you just like don't abuse any of your other ways to win the game. <clears throat> Raichu is cool, big fat rat. Raichu is chill, right? I Raichu I don't I don't dislike Raichu. I just dislike attaching attacking with Raichu to be honest. All right. Can Jake win this turn? Jake does definitely does not need to win this turn as well. Like Jake can Jake should do something this turn, but we don't need to win. Once again, used Comfy before Greninja. I don't like it. I don't think I like that there. It's definitely a mistake. See what Jake is cooking, though. There's a Stormy Mountain first, just to check the deck. And then we'll see the Nest Ball for the Sableye. Can chain Sableyes here. Can go Greninja, Kale, Flaffy, 90 on Zero Aura. Still have the, the Dragonite as a backup. So many plays here for, for Jake. Uh, I think Sableye, Kale, Flaffy here would be pretty good from Jake to try and force Christian down the Raichu path, meaning like you just lose a bunch of energy and play consistently as Christian. So uh, We do see the Sableye grab here from Jake. So yeah, the Sableye play here is solid, but we should go Kale, Flaffy. I, I, I want to see if Jake KOs the Zero Aura or not. There's a Mirage getting... We still have not used Greninja here. I'm pretty sure Jake has just not used Greninja yet still. Um, we have a Mirage Gate in hand. I think there is a Psychic in the deck, so you could just search out the Psychic, but you might want to be looking for Super Out so you can put another energy back in the deck so you can actually get two energies off of your Mirage Gate here because Jake might only have Psychics in the deck right now. There's a Super Out. Okay, we got it. Has the Gate as well. So could have attacked with Greninja here, to be honest. Could have actually got the Greninja attack off if we had gotten rid of the... If we'd kept the Water Energy, got rid of the Lightning Energy, right? What's the energy in hand right now? There's an energy in hand. I don't know which one was gotten rid of and which one was kept. I already, like, forgot. I'm getting tired. <clears throat> Super odds in three. We kept the lightning. If we kept the water, if we kept the water, we could have attacked with Greninja this turn. Greninja would have been a pretty good attack this turn, to be honest. I would have. We should definitely put another energy in play here. We shouldn't not put an energy in play here. We should probably just load up Dragonite, to be honest. Yeah, just load up Dragonite here. Put the water on the Dragonite. Escape up into Sableye. Attach the lightning to Dragonite. Use Sableye, KO, Flaffy. Yeah. Yeah, but this is definitely... This is not... This is incorrect here from Jake. Jake, Jake, like... Just play the escape rope. Oh, do we have 10? Okay, we have 10. Yeah, so this is a mistake here from Jake. It's... Probably won't matter in the long run. So Jake should have gone... There's an escape rope in hand, I believe. Yeah, so play the escape rope. Set up the Sableye. Well, no, no, no. Jake's sequence should have, like... Forced Christian into sending up Flaffy. Jake could have sequenced this where Jake goes play escape rope before like playing anything else down. And then Christian's like, well, if I send up a two prizer and they have Mirage Gate for Dragonite, I lose. Okay, so I send up Flaffy. And then Jake goes, okay, cool, you send up Flaffy. I'm gonna send up Sableye. And I'm gonna go Sableye, KO your Zero Aura, trap your Flaffy in the active. Uh, water, lightning, water on my Dragonite. Sableye, KO, uh, KO Zero Aura, put one damage counter, I don't know, put it somewhere. And then we go ahead. And then Christian goes, okay, I lose. But now it is possible for Christian to play it's possible for Christian to play Iono. Jake not find a way to KO. Uh, dude, the energy on the right is just so bad. It's possible for Christian to play Iono. Jake not find a water energy. And then Christian go attach, knockout save by generator for one, attach, boss KO Dragonite win. So it is possible for Christian to still win here. Um, but there is no Iono in the hand, so I'm pretty sure Jake will probably win on the next turn. Well, actually, I don't know. Because actually, Jake's hand does not have a way to attack right now. Jake does just need a water energy to attack, but. <sighs> Treat to the Raikou. No switch card in hand. Stormy Mountains. Yeah, Christian is hunting here for something. Mareep on the bench. That's fine. You already, like This is fine to put the Mareep on the bench at this point because you still have the Zero Aura in play, so there's already a one prizer in play at this point. So Jake already has a one prize target to like work with here. We footed Iona. Would've been cool to see the punish, but it doesn't look like it. It is a bravery charm, but uh, I think Christian retreated, so I don't think there's any way for Christian to actually win. Uh, I'm pretty sure the game just ends here. Although a reason to not put the Mareep in place, you could have bravery charmed with the Zero Aura, no Mareep in play, which means Sableye doesn't have a target, to be honest. All right, and there's a concede from Christian. Okay. <laughs> All right. Super sloppy game on both sides. I think there was a lack of understanding of the matchup on both sides. So the game plans were pretty weak overall. And then a lot of missequencing uh, as well. Yeah, the game plans, like, Christian was playing, uh, this is why Azul is way better than me. Maybe one day I'll get good. I mean, just keep up, keep practicing. That's all that matters, Jake. Keep putting the practice. Uh, I mean, you're 5-0-1 here. 
<clears throat> keep putting in the effort, you know, make a difference. I guess 601, right? You won. So you're 601 here. That's a pretty good start. Uh, but yeah, your misplays, your misplays will catch up to you eventually. Your misplays do just catch up to you eventually. You could start 9-0, but then if you just misplay your next couple rounds, all of a sudden you're not making top cut, right? So your misplays do catch up with you eventually. Um, you're not going to be able to misplay this much and actually get, walk away with the dub very consistently. So you got to clean up the play. But that's the important start, is to realize that you're making mistakes and then grow from it at that point. But yeah, both players, I think, had a lack of understanding of the matchup in general. Christian was playing super scared of Dragonite uh, when he didn't need to. And then Jake was, like, uh, tunnel visioning and not looking at the whole the whole board of options of, like, I can Greninja, Greninja, Sableye, Dragonite. Jake was a little bit more tunnel visioning on, like, the two prize attackers, specifically in this matchup. But, um, yeah, pretty sloppy on both sides. But dub for Jake in the end.